by disrupting the body's ability to use oxygen, leading to a range of symptoms including headache, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting, followed by seizures, respiratory failure, and cardiac arrest. The cyanide used in the Tylenol murders was in the form of potassium cyanide, a white crystalline powder that is soluble in water and easily absorbed by the body. The poison was apparently injected into the capital into the capsules with a syringe after the bottles had been tampered with and returned to store shelves. Wow. With a syringe. Isn't it? Yeah. Is it liquid inside or it's... Yeah, oh. I think it's like... The like gel ones or whatever? Well, but even if it was just powder, if oh. you like got in the edge, I guess, and got it wet, like it would... You wouldn't know. Oh, okay. I was thinking it'd like break apart if it was... Wet. I think it, they were like the... You know the pills that you can, like, pop open? Yeah, okay. And there's powder inside? Yeah. I think they're like that. Okay. Or that they were... I, or they were liquid. But I, if they were liquid, you would... It would be leaky. So right. So you would know. Yeah. So it must have been capsules like that. Hmm. Um, these poisonings were particularly alarming because they were indiscriminate and affected a wide range of people with no apparent motive or target. And they affected people of different ages, races, and socioeconomic backgrounds, and there was no clear connection between the victims or their families, which this reminds me a lot (laughs) of the vending machine killers and (laughs) the other one. The monster with 21 (laughs) faces. The monster with 21 faces. When was that one? Yeah, I just looked it up because it does remind me of that. That was 84 to 85. So it's like right after maybe this. They, yeah, maybe they got their inspiration. That's what I was thinking. Because, like, Tylenol, I feel like everyone buys Tylenol. Yeah. Like, it's not a specific demographic. Everyone uses it. Right. So it's kind of crazy. What's with the early 80s and poisoning everyone? <laughs> oh, no. On. October 5th, the New York Times received a letter from someone claiming responsibility for the poisonings and demanding a million dollars to stop them, but they later traced the letter back to a man in New York who had no connection to the murders. Mm-hmm. Um, give me, like, they already recalled everything. What are you talking like? Well... Just because they recalled it, they could still poison more, right? Because they didn't change I the guess. packaging at this point. Well, they took them all back. Like, everything got Oh, so the there's shelves. none at all. Right. Unless they have, like, boxes of these, the poisoner, and they start stocking right. shelves themselves or something. <laughs> <laughs> people don't know that people are dying eating them. Well, and- people don't see re- recalls all the time. That's true, I guess. I don't know. Do the stores, like, put a sign that says this is recalled? Usually they do, I think. I've seen them posted. I've seen them posted by, like, the customer service. Oh. I feel like lettuce. Oh, yeah. I've seen signs on, like, lettuce. Right. Yeah. That seems weird that they are, like... I feel like they didn't hear that they recalled it. It's all, like... (laughs) <laughs> Two days later. I know. So they're like, oh, my plan. And then they didn't realize they have already taken action. Right. <laughs> and this this was what the letter said. Okay. Greetings, gentlemen. As you can see, it is easy to place cyanide in capsules. I brought them in with me, and I simply opened two capsules and dumped the cyanide in a glass. I dissolved the crystals and then added the Tylenol. I put the capsules back in the bottle and took them back to the store the next day. I wanted to accomplish two things, to kill indiscriminately and to sow terror among the population. The problem was not that I could not get the poison, but that I could not get enough of it at a reasonable price. I paid $10 for 10 capsules, and I want you to know that I could have gotten 10,000 of them if I had wanted to. The deaths were merely the tip of the iceberg. The police are not up to catching me. They do not have the manpower or the resources. There are other methods of extermination. I have not yet decided whether to use them or not. 
Thank you for your attention. Be careful out there. I'm sorry, what? It really reminds me of the monster. With t- I know. Like, what? Maybe it's all the same. Wouldn't that be crazy? Because one of the theories was that it was like a global organization or something. Oh. That's like behind it. That's. I don't know. I don't know, but the letter was postmarked from Chicago where the poisonings were happening and it was signed a concerned citizen. Mm. The letter contained details about the poisoning that had not yet been released to the public, leading investigators to believe that the letter was likely the, the perpetrator. The letter and the poisonings created a whole sense of fear and panic among the public and led to a number of copycat crimes and hoaxes. Yeah. Why are people psychos? <laughs> I don't know. They just want to belong to anything, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't really understand why there's ever copycat crimes. I think it's like humans. I have not researched this, so I don't know. But someone was telling me that like humans have this like mirror response that if they see someone do something, they also do it. Like they just have like... Oh. It's like an instinct almost. Probably because we're like pack animals. Yeah. And we rely so heavily on like society that they just like, you just do it. I guess. Don't you have to identify as that being part of your tribe though or something? Probably. The person probably said, you know, right, I yeah. also want to do like. I don't know. They're inspired. Well, they were just waiting for an idea. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, you know, I'd really like to kill people, but I don't know how. Oh, these people did it this way. <laughs> that seemed to work. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. So on October 8th, the FBI set up a task force. And by November 10th, James W. Lewis, a 39-year-old tax consultant, from New York was arrested and charged with extortion relating to the case and he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. I believe wow. he's the one who sent the letter, oh. but he didn't cuz they've never solved who actually put Yeah. The, like put the poison in the Tylenol, but he still got 20 years for sending his dumbass letter cuz he tried to blackmail them. I, don't know. I was like that seems a little harsh. Well, they probably wanted to stop people from doing yeah, it again. You know what I mean? True. Thinking they can get away with this stuff. So they know that he wasn't the murderer? He probably wasn't there. Oh. Okay. Like, he... Cause... There's no proof of him being there or something. Oh, okay. But they still got him on... I don't know. Hmm. I could have looked into that This more, seems but... super fast. Well, he wasn't, I don't think he was charged, but they probably got prints. I don't know how they found him. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just think the whole thing, like it started what the end of September and by the second week of October, they have a task force. November. Oh yeah. Well, saying, yeah. yeah, Saying it, but task force seems fast. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that's how it works. Yeah. And then like a month later, they find him. people do to kill before they take you seriously, I guess? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Did they find... I guess... I don't know if you know that, but did they find any more... When they recalled everything, did they find more? I think they did oh. find more that were... Yeah. Tampered with. Yeah. And I believe... This is going off of memory, so don't quote me. But I think that for a while, they thought it was possible that someone did it in the factory but they ruled that out because they were different like lot numbers like how how do you i guess they can track that that's why they have lot numbers on things people (laughs) yeah (laughs) they can track who you know who worked on what and what happened like what could have happened and where stuff ends up but yeah that's true i think a person would have to be taking like one or two bottles out of every random box and do it and put them back in. But I guess it could, I mean, I guess they could do that. Yeah. Slip it back on the line. Right. They didn't have, like, nowadays you could not 
get one off the line to get it back on the line. Like, I'm pretty sure in these manufacturing facilities, no one's touching anything. Oh, yeah. It's just all going on the whatever right uh, conveyor belts and they probably had people screwing caps on back then yeah probably i don't know i don't know did they have machines and i feel like they definitely had bottles uh cap because it's pretty like simple machines yeah they probably have had them for a really long time but did they want to pay for them? Yeah. Well, Johnson and Johnson, I feel like they would. That's if a big they company. would have it, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Probably not someone that worked there. I would think. Right. I don't think so either. Um. But Johnson and Johnson's response to the Tylenol poisonings is widely considered to be a textbook example of crisis management and corporate responsibility. The company's swift and comprehensive response helped to reassure the public and restore trust in the Tylenol brand despite the tragic deaths that had occurred. In the immediate aftermath of the poisonings, Johnson & Johnson recalled all capsules from nationwide stores, a move that cost the company an estimated $100 million in lost sales. They also halted all production and advertising of Tylenol and worked closely with law enforcement agencies to investigate the source of the poisonings. So that actually is one of the few good responses I've ever heard of yeah. a company having. That's like the best thing you could have for your company. <laughs> right. Wow. It's usually like they knew it was happening and they chose not to do yeah, it. Yeah, they covered it like up. Like they chose and... to just leave it. Right. Or ignored every sign that pointed to them being the problem right i guess i don't i could see it's medicine though like i feel like you have to respond quickly that's true and it's it's covered by the fda so i oh. feel like there's a little more oversight you know what i mean like yeah other stuff you're not gonna no one's it's probably a much larger or like longer process to get something pulled from the shelves if it's not on the FDA, but I think the FDA can just tell you you're shut down. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they can just snap their fingers and your whole production has to stop immediately. So maybe that was part of it too. Right. Not that they got told to, but they knew that the risk of that happening was pretty high and that it looks better if they just do it themselves. Right. Yeah. I wonder how much their stock went down. Um, I did look that up oh. it really didn't it like went down immediately after oh, okay yeah but it rebounded really fast because of their response yeah. that's good because i was thinking maybe this is another yeah stock right situation which it seems like there have been quite a few of these in the 80s weren't the wasn't the stock market wild in the 80s too i don't know that was like wolf of wall street time is that everyone's scamming everything (laughs) does that was in the 80s i never watched the movie i really wanted to i think it's on netflix 87 so late was when he got caught um yeah, I think that's... Well, that's when the movie is set, I guess. Oh. So, yeah, like, when he got caught. Yeah. But they were doing a lot of really shady stuff in on Wall Street yeah. at that time, hmm. so... Maybe. Yeah, maybe someone was trying to do, tamper with their <laughs> stocks. But... And maybe they didn't mean to poison people. Because one of them was a kid, like... A kid would die, you know, yeah. if it's a lower dose, but other people took it and didn't die, so maybe it wasn't intended to be deadly. Mm. I mean, more people died than didn't. Yeah, maybe they suck at chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Probably was intended to be deadly, but... Yeah, or they would have put a uh, this is poison note on it or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know. Well, maybe they learned from the Tylenol killings. Yeah. And when they went ahead and did the Monster 21 faces, oh. they 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> they put notes on it so people would know, but then when they got to the paraquat, they're like, okay, we need to ditch the cyanide. Let's try a weed killer. And that was even...